Hey, hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And today it's all about the Record Doctor 6 record cleaning machine. It's a fully manual device. But I've been buying and playing records for many, many decades. And for the most part, have completely avoided record cleaning machines. Now record brushes and stuff like that, yeah, I've used those. But record cleaning machines, not so much. And the rest of the vinyl loving audiophile community has fully embraced record cleaning machines. They, they basically think of it as an essential component to playing records, you know, to get the best out of records. And you know, I, I had a really bad experience many, many, many years ago with a record cleaning machine that screwed up a bunch of my records. And I was like, no, no, I don't want to go back to that. But you know, the thing is, well, I've been too stubborn. The, the Record Doctor 6 uh, record cleaning machine has definitely <laughs> a lot going for it in terms of well, cleaning records. Now, that just sounds like a, a thing, you know, for fussy, uh, anal retentive audiophiles to clean their records. But actually, it's, it goes deeper, pardon the expression, it goes deeper than that because a clean record sounds better than one that isn't clean. And I don't mean the dust on a record, that, that you can sweep away with a, with a brush. I'm talking about the, the muck and guck that's in the grooves, that's deep into the grooves. You know, the place where the stylus is actually playing the records. The stuff you see on the surface isn't the problem. The problem is deeper than the surface. And that's why a record cleaning machine that uses a fluid of some type, record cleaning fluid, and also uh, and a brush to basically get the fluid into the grooves and then a vacuum to suck out the fluid and the debris uh, in one uh, fell swoop. <clears throat> so that's what's going on in record cleaning machines. So Record Doctor has been making these machines for, for decades and they're, they're beloved by uh, audiophiles. Um, and these are at the lower end of the price spectrum. The Record Doctor 6 I'm reviewing today is $299, but it is a near twin of the Record Doctor 5. The differences are mostly cosmetic. The 6, as you can see, has a black laminate cabinet, mine does, because they also have a carbon fiber version. It's either black laminate or carbon fiber with a metal top. It's, it's nicer and this record rotator uh, is, is nicer. But in terms of actually its ability to clean records, the five and the six are, are pretty much identical. So if you can't get to $299 for the six and you can handle $199 for the five, go for the five and don't look back. That's it's going to clean your records just as well. So when I talk about the six, I'm, I'm also talking about the five. The thing you have to understand, record, record cleaning machines come in a variety of forms. Many companies make them. Most of them, or the more expensive ones, are automatic or semi-automatic. That is, they inject the fluid onto the record, they, they brush the record automatically, and then vacuum automatically. So this one, the Record Doctor 6 and the five, uh, to use them, it's a fully manual endeavor. You're totally involved. You're in there every step of the way. You put the record on the spindle. Then you squirt some record cleaning fluid on to the surface of the record. Then you take this knob, put it on top of the record, and then slowly rotate the record while you're holding the, the, with your other hand the brush and you're basically scrubbing gently uh, the record. Then after a few rotations of manually turning the record and using the brush to get the fluid into the grooves, you stop, take the record, take the record off the, the spindle, turn it upside down, and now it's exposed to the, the, the velvet lips on the base of the unit, and that's where the vacuum is. So you turn on the vacuum and then slowly rotate the record clockwise, counterwise, you could do both, that's what I was doing. And you do that for three, four, five rotations, basically until the record is completely dry, and then repeat the process again for the other side of the record. So all of that, to clean one record, I would say it's gonna take you eh, two minutes, less than a little less than two minutes once you get the hang of it. And uh, yeah, the record will look cleaner, that's for sure, but the difference because you're, when you're looking at the record being cleaner, you're just seeing the surface stuff. It's, it's in the grooves. That's where the difference really matters. And I haven't done this at home in, 
in decades, cleaning records with a machine. I've, I've had friends clean some of my records that really needed cleaning. I just gave it to them that had record cleaning machines. But this is the first time I've done it at home in a really long time. And the difference between I played the record uh, unclean, then did the cleaning, then immediately played the record again. And you know what? It really makes a huge difference. It definitely does. Now, I, I would say so much so that before you buy a better turntable, if you're an a vinyl loving audiophile before you buy another turntable before you buy another cartridge buy a rect cleaning machine because the differences that it makes are akin to having a better turntable or a better cartridge unless you're starting out from a really low point with turntables and cartridges but once you're in the let's say five hundred dollar and up range of turntables and two hundred dollar and up range of cartridges and you're happy basically happy with what you have Thinking about buying a Record Doctor 5 for 200 bucks, I'd say that that would be the best way to spend your money to get the best improvement out of the sound of your records. Now, the first thing I noticed, and this is really uh, the big surprise, is that when I put on the clean record, now I had, hadn't adjusted the volume between the unclean and the, and the clean, right? When I put it back on clean, it seemed quieter. And I don't mean quieter in terms of noise, like clicks and pops kind of quieter. I just mean that the average level of the record seemed quieter. And after I did this, I said, maybe I did turn it. Maybe I did increase or decrease the volume. So I made sure, no, I wasn't changing the volume. But the clean record's overall volume was a little bit lower, so it seemed. But the contrast between the quiet parts and the loud parts got bigger. So let's just call that uh, signal to noise got bigger. Definitely so. But the, th the other thing I noticed is that some records, like my, my beloved uh, Nielsen Sings Newman, this record that I've had since the 70s, it's on RCA. I love the music on the record. I never thought the recording sounded particularly good. It was just kind of hazy and blah sounding. And when I cleaned that one post-cleaning, well, I can't say it was suddenly an audiophile recording or anything, but it definitely sounded less hazy, more immediate, more direct. Harry Nielsen's voice, which is very upfront in this record, but really full, very human sounding vocal. It sounded great. It definitely sounded better. Then I played Nina, this Nina Rodas. This is a collection of his music that he did for Fellini and other films. And uh, it's an old record. I've had it at least 20 years. And it was the opposite of the of the Nielsen record, it always sounded kind of bright and grainy and transistory. It just sounded like ugh, not the great best recording, but I've had it all these years because I do like the music. And after I cleaned it, a lot of that edge, that harshness of the record was, was a little less, enough less that I said, that's pretty impressive that I know this record so well and I've always enjoyed the music and sort of grin and bared it through the sound, but now it's it's substantially better. But I tried some new records like this Dylan album that he's basically seeing the songs associated with Frank Sinatra. I know that sounds like a horrible idea, but you know, the thing is the reason that Dylan recorded this record, I gotta tell you a little aside first, is because he really loves this music. And uh, I read somewhere that he, when the band was warming up to do a live gig, he would do these songs, these Sinatra, these Sinatra songs. And he just loved them so much. He said, yeah, let's just make an album. And he did. And it's a really good record. Um, and, he's, and the thing that makes it work so well is he's so into it. You can tell he's digging these tunes. And his voice, it's so much better than his usual voice of the, of the 21st century, where he's just kind of screaming and harsh sounding. This, he's, he's much the smoother Bob. He's definitely smoother. But anyway, the recording is good, especially by Dylan's standards. It's good. But cleaning it, it got better. I felt more of that, him really digging and singing into the mic, the way the band is following him. It just held together better. I know, I know a lot of audiophiles who, even with their new records, brand new LPs, they, they never play them without first cleaning them. There's, there's some kind of gunk that's associated with getting the record out of the pressing mold that the cleaning can remove that makes a difference. So, so even with brand new records, cleaning is, is part of the ritual that they just do. Uh, now remember, I, remember what I said earlier on, 
this whole record cleaning thing is is I'm, I'm really approaching this fresh right I mean basically let's just say never done it because it was so long ago and now I see it now I know a lot of these guys some a lot of them are my friends and they get into the whole ritual and the record cleaning brush and the fluid and a lot of them have very expensive ultrasonic record cleaning machines that go up like four thousand dollars and up uh, it's going to be a while before I ever get to that that level of interest but in terms of the basics of using a machine which is a vacuum machine record cleaning fluid and a brush to basically get the fluid into the groove yes I'm a, I'm a believer I am a convert and I think everybody who has a decent turntable and a record collection I mean if you have 10 records it doesn't matter but if you've accumulated you know 100 or 200 or more records yeah maybe spending two hundred dollars for record doctor five would be uh, <laughs> definitely worthwhile so I just want to make note here that the record doctor as I explained earlier is a fully manual machine the more expensive machines from other companies are uh, take less work they squirt the fluid on automatically they brush automatically they do a lot of stuff automatically that you don't have to lift a finger to do uh, but they are more expensive Another thing I didn't point out earlier is that the record doctor's vacuum is pretty noisy. Some people wear earplugs when they're cleaning records to get around that noise issue. They clean a bunch of records in a row and wear earplugs as they're doing it. So just wanted to put that into this video. Then there's this uh, Dead Combo. I think it's their first album. It's really interesting. It sounds like movie soundtrack movie, you know, maybe like a Morricone score or something. It's mostly just guitars, electric. some tracks are electric, some tracks are acoustic, but it's got this kind of moody, mysterious, uh, noir feeling. I don't know, there's, there's a lot of atmosphere in these recordings. And I tried it, you know, I've, obviously I've been listening to it a little bit without cleaning. Now cleaning, I'm hearing deeper into like the sound stage. You just hear spaces between the instruments more clearly with post-cleaning. And again, it didn't sound bad before I cleaned it. It just made this difference of opening, up, opening it up, giving it more space. Possibly because um, maybe without that stuff that's buried in the grooves, not being there, uh, competing with the sound that's in the groove itself, maybe that's what record cleaning machines do that lets you hear the subtle stuff, the really quiet things in the recording more clearly that's my that's my guess for now let's let's stick with that of course if if you have ideas of what's going on with record cleaning machines that are beyond the surface of you know more than just removing the dust and stuff that you can see the stuff that's in the grooves yeah tell me all about it in the uh, comments below because I'm a newbie to this I admit it so I'm just giving you my first experiences with using the record doctor six so there you have it the record doctor six record cleaning machine an essential component for a vinyl loving audiophile i'm sold i'm a believer uh and my name by the way is steve guttenberg this is the audiophiliac daily show we recently we collectively all of us worldwide hit the hundred and fifty thousand subscriber mark if you're one of those hundred and fifty thousand thank you <laughs> thank you so much for doing that if you have yet to join us, please do hit that button right down there, right down there, and you can instantly subscribe to this amazing <laughs> thing that we do here. Um, other news. Oh, and I want to thank all my patrons, which are, can be found, uh, that whole side of this story, can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac, and I will link to that below this video um more you want more i got more we got playlists and now i'm going to show you because people keep some people can't seem to find them so i'm going to show you illustrations right now of where they are on this uh channel how to find them so we have playlists for music reviews and headphone reviews and speaker reviews and electronics mm -hmm. and electronics reviews those are individual playlists there's also playlists for interviews with uh, the famous and the infamous audiophiles of, of the universe and um, yeah you can find Nelson Pass and Andrew Jones and Harry Pearson no not Harry Pearson I wish oh I wish I had interviewed Harry Pearson but I instead of Harry Pearson I interviewed Harry Weisfeld and his son Matt oh so many 
so many. Eric Alexander from Tecton, all here for your viewing pleasure. So I think we've done it. My name is Steve Gutberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, and uh, it's time to say goodbye. So I hope to see you back here again very, very soon.